Act 2 of The Beggar's Opera by John Gay. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Act 2, Scene 1. A Tavern Near Newgate. Jemmy Twitcher, Crook-Fingered Jack, Wat Dreary, Robin of Bagshot, Nimmy Ned, Henry Paddington, Matt of the Mint, Ben Budge, and the rest of the gang at the table with wine, brandy, and tobacco. But pray thee, Matt, what has become of thy brother Tom? I have not seen him since my return from transportation. Poor brother Tom had an accident this time twelve month, and so clever a maid fellow he was that I could not save him from those fleeing rascals, the surgeons. And now, poor man, he is among the armies at Surgeon's Hall. So it seems his time was come. But the present time is ours, and nobody alive hath more. Why are the laws leveled at us? Are we more dishonest than the rest of mankind? What we win, gentlemen, is our own by the law of arms, and the right of conquest. Where shall we find such another set of practical philosophers, who to a man are above the fear of death? Sound men and true. Of tried courage and indefatigable industry. Who is there here that would not die for his friend? Who is there here that would betray him for his interest? Show me a gang of courtiers that can say as much. We are for a just partition of the world, for every man hath a right to enjoy life. We retrench the superfluities of mankind. The world is avaricious, and I hate avarice. A covetous fellow like a jackdaw steals what he was never made to enjoy for the sake of hiding it. These are the robbers of mankind, for money was made for the free-hearted and generous, and where is the injury in taking from another what he hath not the heart to make use of? Our several stations for the day are fixed. Good luck attends us all. Fill the glasses. Air 19. Fill every glass. Fill every glass, for wine inspires us and fires us with courage, love, and joy. Women and wine should life employ. Is there aught else on earth desirous? Scene 2. To them enter Macheath. Gentlemen, well met. My heart hath been with you this hour, but an unexpected affair hath detained me. No ceremony, I beg you. We were just breaking up to go upon duty. Am I to have the honor of taking the air with you, sir, this evening upon the heath? I uh, <laughs> drink a dram now and then with the stage coachman in the way of friendship and intelligence, and I know that about this time there will be passengers upon the western road who are worth speaking with. I was to have been of that party, but... But what, sir? Is there any man who suspects my courage? We have all been witnesses of it. My honor and truth to the gang? I'll be answerable for it. In the division of our booty, have I ever shown the least marks of avarice or injustice? By these questions, something seems to have ruffled you. Are any of us suspected? I have a fixed confidence, gentlemen, in you all, as men of honor, and as such I value and respect you. Peachum is a man that is useful to us. Is he about to play us any foul play? I'll shoot him through the head. I beg you, gentlemen, act with conduct and discretion. A pistol is your last resort. He knows nothing of this meeting. Business cannot go on without him. He is a man who knows the world, and is a necessary agent to us. 
we have had a slight difference and till it is accommodated i shall be obliged to keep out of his way any private dispute of mine shall be of no ill consequence to my friends you must continue to act under his direction for the moment we break loose from him our gang is ruined as a bard to a whore i grant you he is to us a great convenience make him believe i have quitted the gang which i can never do but with life at our private quarters i will continue to meet you a week or so will probably reconcile us your instructions shall be observed tis now high time for us to repair to our several duties so till this evening at our quarters in moorfields we bid you farewell i shall wish myself with you success attend you sits down melancholy at the table air twenty march in rinaldo with drums and trumpets let us take the road hark i hear the sound of coaches the hour of attack approaches to your arms brave boys and load see the ball i hold let the chemists toil like asses our fire their fire surpasses and turns all our lead to gold the gang ranged in the front of the stage load their pistols and stick them under their girdles then go off singing the first part in chorus scene three macheath drawer what a fool is a fond wench polly is most confoundedly bit i love the sex and a man who loves money might as well be contented with one guinea as i with one woman the town perhaps have been as much obliged to me for recruiting it with free-hearted ladies as to any recruiting officer in the army if it were not for us and the other gentlemen of the sword drury lane would be uninhabited air twenty one would you have a young virgin if the heart of a man is depressed with cares the mist is dispelled when a woman appears like the notes of a fiddle she sweetly sweetly raises the spirits and charms our ears roses and lilies her cheeks disclose but her ripe lips are more sweet than those press her caress her with blisses her kisses dissolve us in pleasure and soft repose i must have women there is nothing unbends the mind like them money is not so strong a cordial for the time drawer enter drawer is the porter gone for all the ladies according to my directions i expect him back every minute but you know sir you sent him as far as hockley in the hole for three of the ladies for one in vinegar yard and for the rest of them somewhere about lucas lane sure some of them are below for i hear the barbell as they come in i will show them up coming coming scene four macheath mrs coaxer dolly trawl mrs vixen betty doxy jenny diver mrs slamakin suki tawdry and molly brazen dear mrs coaxer you are welcome you look charmingly to-day i hope you don't want the repairs of quality and lay on paint dolly trawl kiss me you slut are you as amorous as ever hussy you are always so taken up with stealing hearts that you don't allow yourself time to steal anything else ah dolly thou wilt ever be a coquette mrs vixen i'm yours i always loved a woman of wit and spirit they make charming mistresses what plaguey wives betty doxy come hither hussy do you drink as hard as ever 
you had better stick to good wholesome beer for in troth betty strong waters will in time ruin your constitution you should leave those to your betters what and my pretty jenny diver too as prim and demure as ever there is not any prude though ever so high bred hath a more sanctified look with a more mischievous heart ah thou art a dear artful hypocrite mrs slammakin as careless and genteel as ever all you fine ladies who know your own beauty affect and undress but see here's suki tawdry come to contradict what i was saying everything she gets one way she lays out upon her back why suki you must keep at least a dozen tally men molly brazen she kisses him that's well done i love a free-hearted wench thou hast the most agreeable assurance girl and art as willing as a turtle but hark i hear music the harper is at the door if music be the food of love play on ere you seat yourself ladies what think you of a dance come in enter harper play the french tune that mrs slammakin was so fond of a dance a la ronde in the french manner near the end of it this song and chorus air twenty two cotillion youth the season made for joys love is then our duty she alone who that employs well deserves her beauty let's be gay while we may beauty's a flower despised in decay let us drink and sport to-day ours is not to-morrow love with youth flies swift away age is not but sorrow dance and sing time's on the wing life never knows the return of spring now pray ladies take your places here fellow pays the harper bid the drawer bring us more wine exit harper if any of the ladies choose gin i hope they will be so free to call for it you look as if you met me wine is strong enough for me indeed sir i never drink strong waters but when i have the colic just the excuse of the fine ladies why a lady of quality is never without the colic i hope mrs coaxer you have had good success of late in your visits among the mercers we have so many interlopers yet with industry one may still have a little picking i carried a silver flowered lute string and a piece of black patchesoy to mr peacham's lock but last week there's molly brazen half the ogle of a rattlesnake she riveted a linen draper's eye so fast upon her that he was nicked of three pieces of cambric before he could look off oh dear madam but sure nothing can come up to your handling of laces and then you have such a sweet deluding tongue to cheat a man is nothing but the woman must have fine parts indeed who cheats a woman lace madam lies in a small compass and is of easy conveyance but you are apt madam to think too well of your friends if any woman hath more art than another to be sure tis jenny diver though her fellow be never so agreeable she can pick his pocket as coolly as if money were her only pleasure now that is a command of the passions uncommon in a woman i never go to the tavern with a man but in the view of business i have other hours and other sort of men for my pleasure but had i your address madame have done with your compliments ladies and drink about you are not so fond of me jenny 
as you used to be tis not convenient sir to show my fondness among so many rivals tis your own choice and not the warmth of mine inclination that will determine you air twenty three all in a misty morning before the barn door crowing the cock by hens attended his eyes around him throwing stands for a while suspended then one he singles from the crew and cheers the happy hen with the how do you do and how do you do and how do you do again ah jenny thou art a dear slut pray madam were you ever in keeping i hope madam i ha'n't been so long upon the town but i have met with some good fortune as well as my neighbours pardon me madam i meant no harm by the question it was only in the way of conversation indeed madam if i had not been a fool i might have lived very handsomely with my last friend but upon his missing five guineas he turned me off now i never suspected he had counted them who do you look upon madam as your best sort of keepers that madam is there after as may be i madam was once kept by a jew and betting their religion to women they are a good sort of people now for my part i own i like an old fellow for we always make them pay for what they can't do a spruce prentice let me tell you ladies is no ill thing they bleed freely i have sent at least two or three dozen of them in my time to the plantations but to be sure sir with so much good fortune as you have had upon the road you must have grown immensely rich the road indeed hath done me justice but the gaming-table hath been my ruin air twenty four when once i lay with another man's wife the gamesters and lawyers are jugglers alike if they meddle your all is in danger like gypsies if once they can finger ourselves your pockets they pick and they pilfer your house and give your estate to a stranger a man of courage should never put anything to the risk but his life these are the tools of a man of armour cards and dice are only fit for cowardly cheats who prey upon their friends she takes up his pistol tawdry takes up the other this sir is fitter for your hand besides your loss of money tis a loss to the ladies gaming takes you off from women how fond could i be of you but before company tis ill-bred wanton hussies i must and will have a kiss to give my wine a zest they take him about the neck and make signs to peachum and constables who rush in upon him scene five to them peachum and constables i seize you sir as my prisoner was this well done jenny women are decoy ducks who can trust them beasts jades jilts harpies furies whores your case mr mckeith is not particular the greatest heroes have been ruined by women but to do them justice i must own they are a pretty sort of creatures if we could trust them you must now sir take your leave of the ladies and if they have a mind to make you a visit they'll be sure to find you at home this gentleman ladies lodges in newgate constables wait upon the captain to his lodgings air twenty five when first i laid siege to my chloris at the tree i shall suffer with pleasure at the tree i shall suffer with pleasure 
let me go where i will in all kinds of ill i shall find no such furies as these are ladies i'll take care the reckoning shall be discharged exit mac heath guarded with peacham and constables scene six the women remain look ye miss jemmy though mr peacham may have made a private bargain with you and suki tawdry for betraying the captain as we were all assisting we ought all to share alike i think mr peacham after so long an acquaintance might have trusted me as well as jenny diver i am sure of these three men of his hanging and in a year's time too if he did me justice should be set down to my account mrs slamakin that is not fair for you know one of them was taken in bed with me as far as a bowl a punch or a treat i believe mrs suki will join with me as for anything else ladies you cannot in conscience expect it dear madam i would not for the world tis impossible for me as i hope to be saved madam nay then i must stay here all night since you command me exeunt with great ceremony scene seven newgate locket turnkeys macheath constables noble captain you are welcome you have not been a lodger of mine this year and a half you know the custom sir garnish captain garnish hand me down those fetters there those mr locket seem to be the heaviest of the whole set with your leave i should like the further pair better look ye captain we know what is fittest for our prisoners when a gentleman uses me with civility i always do the best i can to please him hand them down i say we have em of all prices from one guinea to ten and tis fitting a gentleman should please himself i understand you sir gives money the fees here are so many and so exorbitant that few fortunes can bear the expense of getting off handsomely or of dying like a gentleman those i see will fit the captain better take down the further pair do but examine them sir never was better work how genteely they are made they will fit as easy as a glove and the nicest man in england might not be ashamed to wear em he puts on the chains if i had the best gentleman in the land in my custody i could not equip him more handsomely and so sir i now leave you to your private meditations scene eight macheath air twenty six courtiers courtiers think it no harm man may escape from rope and gun nay some about lived the doctor's pill who takes a woman must be undone that basilisk is sure to kill the fly that sips treacle is lost in the sweets so he that tastes woman 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 he that tastes woman ruin meats to what a woeful plight have i brought myself here must i all day long till i am hanged be confined to hear the reproaches of a wench who lays her ruin at my door i am in the custody of her father and to be sure if he knows of the matter i shall have a fine time on it betwixt this and my execution but i promised the wench marriage what signifies a promise to a woman does not man in marriage itself promise a hundred things that he never means to perform do all we can women will believe us for they look upon a promise as an excuse for following their own inclinations but here comes lucy and i cannot get from her 
would I were deaf. Scene 9, Macheath, Lucy. You base man, you! How can you look me in the face after what hath passed between us? See here, perfidious wretch, how I am forced to bear about the load of infamy you have laid upon me. Oh, Macheath, thou hast robbed me of my quiet. To see thee tortured would give me pleasure. Air 27 A lovely lass to a friar came. Thus when a good housewife sees a rat, in her trap in the morning taken, with pleasure her heart goes pit a pet in revenge for her loss of bacon then she throws him to the dog or cat to be worried crushed and shaken have you no bowels no tenderness my dear lucy to see a husband in these circumstances a husband in every respect but the form and that my dear may be said over us at any time friends should not insist upon ceremonies from a man of honour his word is as good as his bond <laughs> tis the pleasure of all you fine men to insult the women you have ruined air twenty eight twas when the sea was roaring how cruel are the traitors who lie and swear in jest to cheat unguarded creatures of virtue fame and rest whoever steals a shilling through shame the guilt conceals in love the perjured villain with boasts the theft reveals the very first opportunity my dear have but patience you shall be my wife in whatever manner you please insinuating monster and so you think i know nothing of the affair of miss polly peachum i could tear thy eyes out sure lucy you can't be such a fool as to be jealous of polly are you not married to her you brute you married very good the wench gives it out only to vex thee and to ruin me and thy good opinion tis true i go to the house i chat with the girl i kiss her i say a thousand things to her as all gentlemen do that mean nothing to divert myself and now the silly jade hath said it about that i am married to her to let me know what she would be at indeed my dear lucy these violent passions may be of ill consequence to a woman in your condition come come captain for all your assurance you know that miss polly hath put it out of your power to do me the justice you promised me a jealous woman believes everything her passion suggests to convince you of my sincerity if we can find the ordinary i shall have no scruples of making you my wife and i know the consequence of having two at a time <laughs> that you are only to be hanged and so get rid of them both i am ready my dear lucy to give you satisfaction if you think there is any in marriage what can a man of honour say more so then it seems you are not married to miss polly you know lucy the girl is prodigiously conceited no man can say a civil thing to her but like other fine ladies her vanity makes her think he's her own for ever and ever air twenty nine the sun had loosed his weary teams the first time at the looking-glass the mother sets her daughter the image strikes the smiling lass with self-love ever after each time she looks she fonder grown thinks every charm grows stronger but alas vain maid all eyes but your own can see you are not younger when women consider their own beauties they are all alike 
unreasonable in their demands for they expect their lovers should like them as long as they like themselves yonder is my father perhaps this way we may light upon the ordinary who shall try if you will be as good as your word for i long to be made an honest woman scene ten peachum locket with an account book in this last affair brother peachum we are agreed we have consented to go halves in the keith we shall never fall out about an execution but as to that article pray how stands our last year's account if you will run your eye over it you will find it fair and clearly stated this long arrear of the government is very hard upon us can it be expected that we would hang our acquaintance for nothing when our betters would hardly save theirs without being paid for it unless the people in employment pay better i promise them for their future i shall let other rogues live besides their own perhaps brother they are afraid these matters may be carried too far we are treated too by them with contempt as if our profession were not reputable in one respect indeed our employment may be reckoned dishonest because like great statesmen we encourage those who betray their friends such language brother anywhere else might turn to your prejudice learn to be more guarded i beg you ere thirty how happy are we when you sent you of the age be cautious and sage lest the courtiers offended should be if you mention vice or bribe tis so pat to all the tribe each cries that was levelled at me yes poor ned clinch's name i see sure brother lockett that was a little unfair proceeding in ned's case for he told me in the condemned hold that for value received you had promised him a session or two longer without molestation mr peachum this is the first time my honour was ever called in question business is at an end if once we act dishonourably who accuses me you are warm brother he that attacks my honour attacks my livelihood and this usage sir is not to be borne since you provoke me to speak i must tell you too that mrs coaxer charges you with defrauding her of her information money for the apprehending of curl pated hugh indeed indeed brother we must punctually pay our spies or we shall have no information is this language to me sirrah who have saved you from the gallows sirrah collaring each other if i am hanged shall be for the ridding the world of an errant rascal this hand shall do the office of the halter you deserve and throttle you you dog brother brother we are both in the wrong we shall be both losers in the dispute for you know we have it in our power to hang each other you should not be so passionate nor you so provoking it, it, tis our mutual interest tis for the interest of the world we should agree if i said anything brother to the prejudice of your character i ask pardon brother peachin i can forgive as well as resent give me your hand suspicion does not become a friend i only meant to give you occasion to justify yourself but i must now step home for i expect the gentleman about the snuff-box that filch nimmed two nights ago at the park i pointed him at this hour scene eleven locket lucy whence come you hussy my tears might answer that question you have then been whimpering and fumbling like a spaniel over the fellow that hath abused you one can't help love one can't cure it tis not in my power to obey you and hate him learn to bear your husband's death like a reasonable woman tis not the fashion nowadays so much as to affect sorrow upon these occasions no woman would ever marry if she had not the chance of mortality for her release act like a woman of spirit hussy and thank your father for what he is doing 
air thirty one of a noble race with shenkin is then his fate decreed sir such a man can i think of quitting when first we met so moves me yet i see how my heart is splitting look ye lucy there is no saving him so i think you must even do like other widows buy yourself weeds and be cheerful air thirty two you think you many days and sue this sentence not severe i hang your husband child tis true but with him hang your care twang ding dilly dee like a good wife go moan over your dying husband that child is your duty consider girl you can't have the man and the money too so make yourself as easy as you can by getting all you can from him scene twelve lucy macheath though the ordinary was out of the way to-day i hope my dear you will upon the first opportunity quiet my scruples oh sir my father's hard heart is not to be softened and i am in the utmost despair but if i could raise a small sum would not twenty guineas think you move him of all the arguments in the way of business the perquisite is the most prevailing your father's perquisites for the escape of prisoners must amount to a considerable sum in the year money well timed and properly applied will do anything air thirty three london ladies if you at an office solicit your due and would not have matters neglected you must quicken the clerk with the perquisite too to do what is duty directed or would you the frowns of a lady prevent she too has this palpable failing the perquisite softens her into consent that reason with all its prevailing what love or money can do shall be done for all my comfort depends upon your safety scene thirteen lucy macheath polly where is my dear husband <gasps> was a rope ever intended for this neck oh <laughs> let me throw my arms around it and throttle thee with love why dost thou turn away from me tis thy polly tis thy wife was ever such an unfortunate rascal as i am was there ever such another villain oh macheath was it for this we parted taken imprisoned tried hanged cruel reflection i'll stay with thee till death no force shall tear thy dear wife from thee now what means my love not one kind word not one kind look think what thy polly suffers to see thee in this condition air thirty four all in the downs thus when the swallow seeking prey within the sash is closely pent his comfort with bemoaning lay without sits pining for the event her chattering lovers all around her skim she heeds them not poor bird her soul's with him macheath aside i must disown her the wench is distracted am i then built of my virtue can i have no reparation sure men were born to lie and women to believe them oh villain villain am i not thy wife thy neglect of me thy aversion to me too severely proves it look on me tell me am i not thy wife perfidious wretch barbarous husband hadst thou been hanged five months ago i had been happy and i too if you had been kind to me till death it would not have vexed me and that's no very unreasonable request though from a wife to a man who hath not above seven or eight days to live art thou then married to another hast thou two wives monster if women's tongues can cease for an answer hear me i won't flesh and blood can't bear my usage 
Shall I not claim my own? Justice bids me speak. Air 35. Have you heard of a frolicsome ditty? How happy could I be with either, were t'other dear charmer away. But while you thus tease me together, to neither a word will I say, but toll de roll de lay. Sure, my dear, there ought to be some preference shown to a wife. At least she may claim the appearance of it. He must be distracted with his misfortunes, or he could not use me thus. Oh, villain, villain, thou hast deceived me. I could even inform against thee with pleasure. Not a prude wishes more heartily to have facts against her intimate acquaintance than I now wish to have facts against thee. I would have her satisfaction, and they should all out. Air 36, Irish Trot i am bubbled i am bubbled oh how i am troubled bamboozled and bit my distresses are doubled when you come to the tree should the hangman refuse these fingers with pleasure could fasten the noose i'm bubbled i'm bubbled he pacified my dear lucy this is all a fetch of polly's to make me desperate with you in case i get off if i'm hanged she would fain have the credit of being thought my widow really polly this is no time for a dispute of this sort for whenever you are talking of marriage i am thinking of hanging and hast thou the heart to persist in disowning me and hast thou the heart to persist in persuading me that i am married why polly dost thou seek to aggravate my misfortunes really miss peachum you but expose yourself besides this barber is in you to worry a gentleman in his circumstances air thirty seven cease your funning force or cunning never shall my heart trepan all these sallies are but malice to seduce my constant man tis most certain by their flirting women oft have envy shown please to ruin others wooing never happy in their own decency madam methinks might teach you to behave yourself with some reserve with the husband while his wife is present but seriously polly this is carrying the joke a little too far if you are determined madam to raise a disturbance in the prison i shall be obliged to send for the turnkey to show you the door i am sorry madam you force me to be so ill-bred give me leave to tell you madam these forward airs do not become you in the least madam and my duty madam obliges me to stay with my husband madam air thirty eight good morrow gossip joan why how now madam flirt if you thus must chatter and are for flinging dirt let's try who best can spatter madam flirt why how now saucy jade sure the wench is tipsy to him how can you see me made the scoff of such a gypsy to her saucy jade scene fourteen lucy macheath polly peachum where's my wench a uh, hussy hussy come you home you slut and when your fellow is hanged hang yourself to make your family some amends dear dear father do not tear me from him i must speak i have more to say to him <laughs> twist thy fetters about me that he may not haul me from thee <laughs> sure all women are alike if ever they commit the folly they are sure to commit another by exposing themselves away not a word more you are my prisoner now hussy air thirty nine irish howl 
no power on earth can e'er divide the knot that sacred love hath tied when parents draw against our mind the true love's knot they faster bind oh oh ray oh amboro oh, oh, oh. holding macheath peachum pulling her scene fifteen lucy macheath i am naturally compassionate wife so that i could not use the wench as she deserved which made you at first suspect there was something in what she said indeed my dear i was strangely puzzled if that had been the case her father would never have brought me into the circumstance no lucy i had rather die than be false to thee how happy am i if you say this from your heart for i love thee so that i could sooner bear to see thee hanged than in the arms of another but couldst thou bear to see me hanged oh macheath i can never live to see that day you see lucy in the account of love you are in my debt and you must now be convinced that i rather choose to die than be another's make me if possible love thee more and let me owe my life to thee if you refuse to assist me peachum and your father will immediately put me beyond all means of escape my father i know hath been drinking hard with the prisoners and i fancy he is now taking his nap in his own room if i can procure the keys shall i go off with thee my dear if we are together will be impossible to lie concealed as soon as the search begins to be a little cool i will send to thee till then my heart is thy prisoner come then my dear husband owe thy life to me and though you love me not be grateful but that polly runs in my head strangely a moment of time may make us unhappy for ever air forty the lass of patty's mill i like the fox shall grieve whose mate hath left her side whom hounds from morn to eve chase over the country wide where can my lover hide where cheat the weary pack if love be not his guide he never will come back End of Act two.